All right, I'm going to do a uh, short little video here to demonstrate the uh, new point of interest uh, flight mode that's available on the Phantom 3. Uh, it's out with the new firmware and DJI uh, Go app as of September 7, 2015, and that's the version they're going to be using today. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you the screen images. I think those are going to be the most useful. So these screen images are going to be on the Android version. Uh, I've watched some videos on the Apple or iOS version, and they're pretty much identical. So there's not going to be too many differences here. Uh, it's really pretty much just the layout that's going to be different. So I'm going to just run through uh, the on-screen prompts, things of that nature, a few things that I've found out about this mode that uh, you may not know that should help some people out. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch the Phantom. I have uh, 15 satellites. Right now it's in uh, the P as in Paul mode, which is uh, how you should be starting out. And I'll go ahead and launch the Phantom. The home point takeoff. All right, boost it up a little bit. Now get a little bit closer to me here. So that should be good. Uh, first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to, uh, you are going to have to enable uh, the modes on the settings. I'm not going to go through that information. You can find that online without any problem. Uh, first thing you're going to have to do after that is going to switch over to F as in Frank mode, which is going to be in the upper left hand corner of the controller. So I'll go ahead and switch to the F mode and you'll see in the upper left hand corner of the screen it's going to go to uh, F GPS and you're going to get this pop-up window the intelligent navigation modes that are available to you the one they're going to be looking at in this particular video is going to be uh, point of interest so I'll go ahead and click on the point of interest icon you're going to get this pop-up window that's going to uh, explain to you that you need to fly directly above the point of interest or what you want to capture in the uh, frame. So I'm going to go ahead and raise this up a little bit. It is showing the current altitude to help you get that. I, I find that the minimum altitude is going to be about 30 feet or so. Uh, I find it's a little bit better not to go under 40 feet. You definitely want to make sure that you're going to be clearing any types of uh, obstacles that you're going to be flying around. I'll go ahead and bounce it up to 40 feet. Uh, one way that you can do this is you can point the camera straight down and then fly directly over your point of interest so that you have a good idea where that is. Uh, for a moment I'll go ahead and enlarge the map to show you and zoom in a little bit. So now you can see on this that it's directly over me. Bring that back up. I'll go ahead and apply. And now what you want to do is, is you want to fly the uh, Phantom out to what you want to be the radius of this circle. From the center point to the outside of the circle. So I'll go ahead and back up. You'll notice that the radius is in the upper left hand corner of the pop up window. It's a minimum amount. It's going to be just about 15 feet. Uh, from the center uh, Once you get to that it'll go blue. So I'll go ahead and back it out uh, I will tell you that if you fly in a very small radius that You're gonna get You're gonna get vertigo watching the film. It's just gonna be super fast even if you slow it down. So uh, I'll go ahead and back out a good uh, 60 feet here pan the camera up Keep me in the view here so my altitude in the pop-up window is 40 feet. Radius is going to be 60 feet. Now you want to move down this pop-up window and you have the speeds. You can fly either uh, counterclockwise, that's the default, or you can fly uh, clockwise. Either way, the farther out you move, the faster the uh, Phantom 3 is going to fly. It's also going to tell you the time frame that it's going to need to uh, completely do a circle. 
So I'm going to go ahead and set this at a little bit slower speed. I'm going to go ahead and set it at uh, just about 5 miles an hour, 5.3 here, in a counterclockwise rotation. You'll see if I bring up the map, you'll see a green circle. That's going to be the circle that the Phantom is going to rotate on. Uh, that's going to give you the most information in this video, so I'll go ahead and leave that up on the screen and leave the, uh, the view in the lower left-hand corner. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Start, and you're going to see a pop-up window here. In these Intelligent Flight modes, this pop-up window is always going to come up now. It's going to tell you what your return to home altitude is and give you the option to change it. Uh, that's going to be very important important to you. Right now I have the Phantom flying at 40 feet which in this return to home window is 12 meters. My return to home altitude is set at 50 meters. So if you feel that that's not going to clear any obstacles on its return to home you want to go ahead and change it at this point. You can go ahead and click apply. It's going to lock that in. So now I can it's going to go ahead and also move around in that circle. You'll see that it's gonna fly around that green circle. And as it starts, I have it facing inward so you can see me as the point of interest. In the pop-up window on the right-hand side, you're gonna get two helpful screens. It's gonna show you the right stick, and then it's gonna switch over to the left stick because you're able to still control the Phantom while it's automatically flying in this point of interest or circle mode. So, uh, you can see in the right stick, which I'm going to focus here at a moment, you can increase the radius and decrease the radius, all while it's flying. So if I pull backwards on the stick, you're going to see the phantom, you're going to see that green circle increase the radius. It's going to go ahead and do that on the fly while you're flying. Now it's going to fly in that outer ring where I've increased the radius. You can also decrease the radius by pushing forward on the right throttle, on the right stick. So there you're going to see that that green line is decreasing. What you're also able to do with the right stick is you're able to more or less back up the Phantom. Depends on which way, if you're going clockwise or counterclockwise, but you're going to be able to manually override the flight of the Phantom and you're going to be able to back it up. If I move it to the left or clockwise, you're going to see I'm able to back it up. If I let go of that stick, it's going to go ahead and continue in this counterclockwise movement. I always try to remember that I'm able to back that Phantom up opposite the way that it's currently flying. So I can move it to the left or clockwise and it's going to back up. I let go and it's going to continue to fly on. Now the left stick, you can also control the Phantom as well. Right now I have it facing inward, but as you can see here, I can turn the Phantom, I can rotate it to the right or left. So if I rotate it to the right, it's now looking forward. I can continue to rotate it with the left stick so that it's facing outward. It's always going to continue on in that circle, but I can film whatever direction I want to. I can film backwards as well, and it'll continue to fly in that circle. I can go ahead and rotate it completely outward so that it's facing outward. I can also increase and decrease the altitude that the Phantom is flying with that left stick. So I can go ahead and push ascend or up and you'll see the altitude is going to increase. I'm at 60 feet now and I can also decrease that altitude by pulling that left stick down or back. The important thing is is the uh, pop-up the, in the right hand side of the screen those two screens explaining the right stick and left stick are going to be very helpful. Another thing that's available in this right-hand pop-up window, you'll see in the upper right-hand corner, it's going to say towards point of interest. Right now, I have that phantom facing outward. If I quickly want to refocus it, 
I say refocus, it's not actually focusing, but if you want to quickly turn toward the point of interest, I click in the upper right hand corner towards point of interest and the phantom will automatically rotate around and face that center point now. So one other thing that you keep in mind is, is that it's not going to always track what's in that point of interest. In other words, if I were to walk out of the frame, I could walk out of the frame. You'll see in this main window, it's always going to be pointing toward or circling that center pin there. It's not going to track anything. I can pan the camera up. I can pan the camera down. You can see in the lower left-hand corner, I can go ahead and pan it to keep whatever I want in that frame. That's one reason why you may want to set that radius a little bit wider in order to keep it in the frame and not get vertigo when you film whatever's in there. Another thing that I discovered is, as you can see in this right-hand pop-up window, I can hide that pop-up window. I, if I go ahead and look at my camera view, you're going to see I have a nice big uh, area. I also get those controls on screen so I can control the camera. I get the menu button so I can control that now. Uh, I get my settings button so I can control that. I can also use my on-screen video and, and uh, photo settings as well, although I can always use the controller to control those. Uh, one way now if you want to see that pop-up window what I can do is is go in the upper left hand corner of the screen here and I can click on the F point of interest and it's gonna bring actually that doesn't bring the menu back up I believe on the iOS or Apple settings it'll bring that menu back up so if I click on, yeah Oh, here we go. How about the uh, blue next to the safe to fly? That'll bring the menu back up. Excuse me. So it's next to the satellite 17 count and next to the safe to fly GPS green up the upper uh, in the upper middle portion of the screen. You can click on that. So I can hide it to bring up the menu, give me a larger screen, and then I can click in the upper portion of the screen, that blue icon to bring that menu back up. So the uh, how you get out of this mode is, is you can either switch back into P as in Paul mode or if you have this pop-up window in the uh, right hand side, let me bring the map back up, in the upper right hand side uh, you can click on exit this mode. It'll give you this prompt to uh, confirm or cancel if you want to exit that mode. If I confirm, it's going to go back and give me this menu, and the Phantom is going to go back into hover mode. So I'm hoping that's going to help a few people out in explaining the point of interest mode. If you have any comments or would like to add some additional information or any questions, feel free to uh, leave that information below.